right, so let's call the meeting to order at 7.03. Good evening, everyone. Enjoy tonight because tomorrow's going to be... This meeting is being recorded. Tomorrow's going to be torture. Oh, Barbara and Judy, I'm so sorry for you. Ugh. All right. Be in person. Oh, okay. There's... Oh, I thought Sandra was already on. She was, and then I think she got bumped out and oh. coming back in. Okay, so public comment for items not on the agenda. And additions or changes to the agenda. I have an update about uh, <clears throat> cloth masks for Town residents. Yeah, okay. You been sewing, Toby? Nope. I've been filling out paperwork. Yeah, I, I did the same thing. So what's your update, Toby? Um, I applied for the town of Callis to get the state 25% uh, of the population of masks to deliver to the town. And I put myself in as the contact and I'm waiting for a response. All right. That's great. Thank you, Toby. Your emergency great. coordinator at work. Um, all right, so let's get started with Sandra. Um, Sandra received notification that we needed to apply for any um, COVID related expenses for, with FEMA through the end of Ju June. Um, we had been putting it off, if you remember, to see if we had any additional expenses. And I don't know that we had any real additional expenses. I think, Sandra, what did you say? We have about $3,300 worth of expenses. Sandra? Hello? Cliff, we can't hear you or Sandra. Well, Cliff, is, can you hear us now? You did. Sandra, are you there? Is Sandra there, Cliff? Yeah, she's online. She turned her mute off, but it looks like um, her audio isn't connected. Huh. Sandra, could you try uh, sending me a text, perhaps? Or you might have to log out and log back in, see if you can establish the audio connection. might be locked up, not hearing us at all. Huh. Um, let me see if I can find her phone number real quick. Okay, well, as we wait, uh, I'll prompt everybody. Remember when uh, computers were cool and they were gonna make our lives so much easier? Oh, yeah. And the biggest problem we'd have in the future is what we would do with all our free time that we'd have because we were using computers. Um, I know it costs our town a lot more to run our office, and then the expectations get greater by the state. And yeah. Because we have technology, and I don't think it saved us money. I think it's costing us in the end. I think we get a lot of benefit out of them though, that we don't want to give up. Yeah, it's definitely a mixed bag. Um, on the flip side, the digitizing of the, the town records has been a lifesaver during this there. situation. So Sandra said she can't get in. Should she try calling maybe Cliff? Yeah, I would tell her to disconnect from the computer and just uh, use one of the numbers to call in. Yeah, just disconnect and try calling. She's in. We can see her. Yeah, but she's locked up. Okay. She has bad cell service or whatever. Okay. All right. Thanks. There's okay. no bad service, John. There's just misunderstanding. So, did, so Cliff and John, did you just resolve all the computer issues? Yeah, we voted to uh, eliminate all IT services. Okay, there you go. Sounds good to me. I, I made the motion. Cliff seconded it. Okay. 
It's passed unanimously. Okay, very good. Well, so have, anyway, so the the, the, the FEMA, the FEMA, the FEMA thing really just needs us to agree that Sandra should send in the invoices and have it documented in the minutes. Yeah, I would move that we have Sandra send in the invoices. Second. Okay. Um, all those, oh, I'll voice vote. Cliff. Aye. John. Yes. Rose. Aye. Sharon. Aye. And I'm an I. Okay, Sandra should be on any, any time. Um, the Nemric letter that we got sent that the price went up $80 um, a month. We don't, I asked Sandra about it and she can. Alfred Larrabee. Oh, okay. Hey, Alfred. She can explain it further, but we never even. Joined the meeting. We never spend close to 500. It's usually around 300 or so. But I thought that that's a mandatory payment. I don't think so. I misunderstood. Oh, there's, there's Sandra. 45 a month. We were just talking about the Nemric, Sandra, the 500 or the 580 is not what we usually end up paying. Is that correct? Correct. Um, I'm sorry for the technical issues. I figured it out. Yes, she oftentimes only spends an hour, an hour and a half reconciling the accounts. I think uh, most recently her highest bill in uh, preparation for the audit was $300. So um, I, I don't, I, that is a very similar contract to what we had last year. And, you know, they can promise up to four hours, but she's not had to use four hours. And so it's not automatically a $500 bill. It's whatever she time she spends. Yes, it's by the hour. Okay, thanks for the clarification. I was really concerned we were gonna shell out $545 a month. Yeah. Um, before we talk about payments, Sandra, I have a question on the orders. There's an invoice in here for contact engineered services for $66,000. It's a grant, a George Road grant. Do we, we, we pay for that up front and get reimbursed or how does that work? Well, I'm going to, if, if Toby or Alfred are on, they should better speak to this. My understanding is um, this is a grant and all then we will be reimbursed our direct expenses, but we have to outlay them first. Is that correct? Or, or is there Tony, Toby or Alfred out there somewhere? Yeah. yeah. Yes, Alfred's here also. And that's the way it's always been is that we pay it out front and then we get reimbursed. Wow, this is a lot of money right at the beginning of the new fiscal year. So we have, so Sandra, do we have, we haven't even started to collect taxes yet. So where will this money come from? Well, the fund balance will have to cover us, but we roughly have about 300, maybe $360,000 in a fund balance. This is our second order. Wait, pardon me. This is our third order of the new fiscal year. And it is, is it $140,000? Is that the total, Denise? Um, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so that cuts deep into our fund balance. And um, I think some uh, bills this large, Alfred and Toby, maybe we could, as next time around, try and get these folks to maybe take it in chunks, like part of it in August, and part of it in September when we actually have money coming in. Well, yeah. con contact I don't is know if they would agree to that, but it, it would really help our cash flow. Well, con contact is the supplier of the culvert itself. So they're, they're probably not gonna give us multiple payments. Um, and we have not been billed by the contractor yet. 
So, and um, this project should be done in two weeks and I will do the reimbursement as soon as it's complete. And so we should see a reimbursement for all of those funds within a month. Oh, awesome. Thank you for that information. I, I was wondering how that was going to go. Okay, thanks, Toby. John? Just, just oh. a point of clarification. Maybe someone can bring me up to speed on history. I remember years back when I joined the select board that there were times when we would take out a loan in anticipation of taxes. I think it was particularly related to school taxes, but because they were such sizable amount, but um, have we not done that as a town in a long time? And because we've maintained a balance, is that something we could do if we do get in a pinch? You haven't had to do that for the last three years. We've had a um, comfortable general fund balance to cover our cash flow. And again, this beginning this fiscal year, we have a comfortable fund balance uh, larger than we've had in the last couple of years. Um, will we need to take out a TAN? We'll have to see. It depends on how our tax monies come in. Um, I am not, uh, I can't predict that. I can tell you that almost all of our delinquent taxes have come in. I, I mean, I, I think there's a good chance that we're going to see our taxes come in fairly well. But again, I just don't know. So in other words, since we've had this um, fund balance reserve, I, I guess I'd consider it like a savings account that we can borrow from and then things like this grant we get paid back for, correct? Right. So what, what it looks like right now is the highway is in the negative in terms of expenditures versus revenue. So the fund balance then covers that. Once revenues come in as reimbursement, the, the highway then goes back to a positive number and our fund balance is released essentially from that obligation. It, it just was, that was a very large order, $140,000 right yeah. now, very large. So uh, we're lucky we've, we've got the money and Toby is, sounds like we're gonna get reimbursement within a month and, and we should be fine. Okay, great. Any further uh, You questions? know, we'll, we'll do whatever it takes to make it work. Yeah. But it, yeah. It, that, that was a lot for, <laughs> for August. Yeah, I was shocked. I was pretty, I was like, whoa. All right. So let's talk about um, hey, I'm sorry, did somebody, oh, Cliff? <laughs> Cliff, you're on mute. You had your hand up. Yeah, it won't, wasn't letting me unmute. Oh. We need to circle back around to approving the renewal of the Nimric contract before we move on. Oh, you're right. Yep. So um, we have the NEMRIC contract, which I forwarded to everybody. Now that we've talked about it and understand it better, is everybody okay with re-upping uh, re the contract for the next year? Yep. Okay, would somebody like to make a motion? I move to renew the NIMRIC contract for the audit. The monthly audit, right? Monthly audit, yep. And it needs one and it needs one signature. So I'll add to that that uh, I'd authorize the select board chair to sign on behalf of the select board. Okay. I'll second that. that. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? All right, let's vote. Cliff. Aye. John. Aye. Rose. Aye. Sharon. Aye. And I'm an I. All right, very good. I'll, Sandra, I'll put this signed contract in the folder. Will that work? Yes. Okay. 
I'll let Cynthia know that it has been signed. And so by the time the folder gets back to the office, she, yep. she will, and, and we get it back to her, she will already have been advised. Very good, thank you. Okay. And be, I think we did it before you came back on, Sandra. We approved the payment of the FEMA expenses. Okay, good. It's, it's in the minutes. All right. Um, would you like, I'll tell you very quickly, we will be applying for uh, $3,478. Um, and I think all of them are expenses that are going to fly. We had the garage cleaning, we had uh, cleaning expenses and a, ther uh, pardon me, cleaning um, supplies and a thermometer. And I believe they all fall within um, those defined um, reimbursable expenses. Uh, and they were all expended before June 30th. So I think we're good. We're just over that. <laughs> we're just over the uh, threshold of $3,300. So I'm and we get it, and we get it all, And we get it all back, correct? We will at this point, yes, Perfect. the state at, at, between FEMA and the state, we will be reimbursed. Uh oh, Sandra's froze. No, I'm here. Oh, okay. You were froze for a second, but now we can't hear yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, can you hear? We, we'll be reimbursed 100%. Perfect. That's great. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay. Okay. Um, options for payment of taxes. Um, right now, the town office would like to have the authority or the ability to refuse to accept large amounts of cash for payment of taxes because it is a challenge when somebody comes in with thousands of dollars worth of paper money, they have to count it. Sometimes they have to recount it. The person there, um, it has to be there for the whole time that they're counting it. Um, then once it goes from the town office staff and then Sandra gets it, she has to recount it again. So there's a lot of opportunity for the transmission of germs not well, that, only that. that's why that's why i'm advocating for payment uh but through the use of hay bales because <laughs> that side if they're round bales you can get a lot of value in a single bale they're easier to count yes and highly marketable and worth a lot of money too yes i want to pay in chickens well i could pay in eggs so anyways, um, I'd like us to be able to support the office staff in directing them to, per Jim's advice, he gave, a, he gave us a, a brief email of his opinion on this, and he said that we can opt to not accept cash. Um, Ms. Barbara? There's also the security measure that we're working alone at the town office. There's not a second person there and we're in a remote location. So it's a little scary uh, the thought of sitting there counting three and $4,000 out at a time <clears throat> and then having that in the office and Sandra also getting it transferred from us to Sandra. It's, the, it's, it, it's, quite, it's quite cumbersome even under the best of circumstances. Right. Yes, I, I would like to follow up with that. Um, we, we are not in a secure space and oftentimes uh, folks come in, they don't have exact change. It's a lengthy transaction uh, to be sure. And in addition to what I feel is a security risk to your employees and elected officials, there is also the 
segment of time that I am required to carry that cash in a bulging bag and drive a half an hour down the road with very little cell service, get out of my car, walk to a bank, stand in line with other people at the bank until I am um, attended to. So I dread those days when I have to um, take that money from the town vault to the bank. So I, I, and for the relatively few people who want to pay in cash, I don't think it's worth the risk to your um, elected staff or your employees to continue to accept it. And I would have asked for this had I known that you would have the legal authority to set policy um, that cash for uh, uh, that tax payments could only be made by credit card, money order, or uh, charging on the website. I, I think it's, I think we, we deserve um, some protection here, not only from germs, but from the ne'er-do-wells out there. It's a lot to handle thousands of dollars and be alone with it. So in Jim's advice to us, and I'm not looking at Zoom right now because I'm looking at the email that oh. that Jim sent. So I apologize if I interrupted anybody. Um, requiring payment by check or credit card could reduce the risk significantly. In other words, for having the cash on hand. Having a large amount of cash on hand at a remote town office arguably creates a safety risk for town office employees. Additionally, we are presently operating in a declared state of emergency under v 20 VSA 16. Towns are authorized to make rules as may be necessary um, in carrying out the provisions of this chapter, but not inconsistent with any orders, rules, or regulations. Under the acting under this additional authority, the select board could adopt a policy, a rule requiring payment of taxes by check or credit card. Um, as such payments potentially reduce the amount of in-person time necessary to make transactions, thus reducing the health risk to employees. So in his review of the statutes and the current um, authority that we have because of the COVID-19 stuff, it is in his opinion, the town can say no cash and require payment of taxes by check or credit card. So that was, I was reading right from Jim's um, email. Denise, I know we had a, um, a note from a taxpayer about this issue. Yeah. And I don't recall, and I'm, so I'm raising the question. Did it come from a place of insisting that we take cash because I'm, I'm putting words in somebody's mouth here, but because this is Vermont and that's what we do and people have a right to cash or was it more from a do you have the authority to not accept cash was it was it a query which we will have resolved with this uh, if, opinion from Jim or do are we going to have a messaging issue um, if we go this direction I think the email we received was a little bit of both I think that um, it was a query that you know, we've always accepted cash. How, do we, do you have the authority to not accept cash, which is legal tender? Right. And that's prompted, and that's why I asked Jim about that, because I think that's probably true that it's legal tender, but we have the authority to take payments in the way that we feel are the best for us under the circumstances. And so how many people, how frequently does it happen, Sandra and Barbara? Like what, just kind of anticipate feedback. I'd say, I'd say maybe 20 or 30 people would be impacted. And that's it. I'm, su well, I'm surprised it's that many. It, well, they, you know, they'll pay in cash. Uh, they might bring $100, $100, $100, $100, and then they pay it twice. But I'd say no more than 30, maybe 20. It's not that many, but it's a lot of cash 
it's a lot of cash because you're talking, if it were a couple of hundred dollars, maybe I wouldn't have my, eyebrow, uh, my eyebrows and my hairline so much, but there are thousands, people bring thousands of dollars in $20 bills. And last year, uh, the three of us were in the office when the nicest woman, a very sweet, wonderful taxpayer came in and she said, here, I don't know how much is there. Well, that's a problem for me because my first question always is, what are you giving me? <laughs> so not only did she not know what was there, but she assured me her husband said it was enough. Well, we began to count it and it wasn't enough. There wasn't enough money there. And she very brightly says, oh, that's all right. I'm going to go to the car and I'll get, I'll get some more. And turned around and walked out the door with piles of cash sitting in front of me and three <laughs> people lined up in the office. I mean, it's actually, it's, if, if it weren't a, a security risk, it would be charming. Do you know what I mean? Well, that's, I think that's the, um, you know, the, the trust, they trusted you folks in the office. They don't think about, you know, they don't think about the other pieces of it. Is You know, it's their innocence, really. It is. It is. But as for us in the office, I, it, when there were three of us, of course, there's always some feeling of more safety in numbers. But right. at this point, it's either uh, Barbara alone or Judy alone. And I think that really heightens um, a, the, the security issues here. And also it's uncomfortable for them. It would be uncomfortable for me to be in the office alone with cash. And last year I was in on a Saturday counting cash, tax cash for a deposit and, and, a, and a very irate man knocked on the door looking for directions and wanting to come in and use the phone while I had cash laid out on the counter. It was very uncomfortable. Um, thinking that he, he was upset with something, not with me, but it, it was not a, a position that I would wanna ever be in again. And I really don't think, I really, think Barbara and Judy should not be placed in this position either. And as I said, the transportation of this, of these thousands of dollars is stressful and I dread it. Yeah. So board members, would you want, we could just have a statement in the minutes saying that we would um, be supportive of not, but however we want to say it, but supportive of the office staff not collecting or having to collect taxes in cash, or there could be a very short policy, but don't forget tax bills have gone out. So people are going to start paying. John? Um, Sandra, that anecdote, that case in point you provided us, thank you. Um, is that an elderly woman? No. It, no. Okay. And in fact, she is a business owner in Montpelier. I don't want to give too much identifying okay. information. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, I, I, I was going to <laughs> offer that if there's, if we have elderly residents who have difficulty getting to town and they got cash, that if you put them in touch with me, I could drive them to my credit union. I could get them a cashier's check made out to the town with a note saying this is from, you know, Ella Fitzgerald. And um, does she still live in town? And uh, <laughs> then I could drive her back to the, the office and we could finish it up. So, so I, I think I'm, I'm just concerned some people may not have the capacity for whatever reason to do what is very simple for us to do. So I'm willing to be available to do that. Yeah, thank you, John. Yeah, I would be willing to you know, the vote that it's it, no cash will be accepted. By right. The way. I mean, I think the office staff, maybe on a case by case basis, if they know the situation, you know, maybe they would be willing to accept the cash. But for overall purposes, I think it would be acceptable to say no cash. 
I think in short, yeah, Barbara. Yeah, Barbara wants to Barbara's speak. had her hand up. They can get a money order at the post office. They can go to the Maple Corner or the East Callis Post Office and get a money order. That's true. I, I had I had to get a money order not that long ago, and they would only do up to five hundred dollars. So you'd have to make several trips for um, a money order. But that's that could be the way it is. Cliff, uh, I checked it today. The post office's policy is now you can get them up to a thousand dollars, and oh, the good. price is a dollar seventy-five for any amount between five hundred and one thousand dollars. Also, many banks are offering to waiving their policy of charging for a cashier's check. And um, some accounts are already set up where you get that service for free. Other banks are waiving it as a courtesy under the current circumstances. So there are options out there. Yeah. Yeah, I think everybody's becoming a little more flexible and during this time. Sharon? I. I like where I like the question and appreciate the question and the offer, from John. I, I would be really excited if we could frame our no cot no cash as we are not accepting cash payment at the town office. If you, but we understand that cash is the way that people some people like to pay. So please contact contact us to work out an accommodation. So that we're not saying no, we are creating an op. You know, we're just oh, we're, we're saying yes under our terms, but without yeah. laying it all out to say we, we will accommodate you if cash is your preference. Please contact you know I don't know somebody um, to make an arrangement. And so and so the arrangement is as join the meeting. You know something that works where cash isn't showing up for Sandra and Barbara and Judy to deal with. I, want, I would want to make it clear that we are not going to ex expect the office staff to drive people to a bank or someplace to get the cashier's check. Right, but I heard John offering to- Right, no, I'm just, I'm just want to make it clear so that they don't get put in the position of having to do that additional work. Great. Absolutely. I, I, I'm, I'm uncomfortable having to negotiate this over the phone individually on a case by case. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying you. Sh it doesn't have to be you, Barbara. It can be. It can be somebody else. I mean, it's a. To me, it's a front porch forum communication with. You could say contact. You know, Denise, the chair, and if that's okay with Denise, and yeah, we'll we'll deal with it, Barbara. Why? Um... I think the front porch forum posting. We're going to have to be very careful how we word it because that's what started this whole discussion right but that's going to go better than if we don't and we just leave it to these guys to communicate sandra so my feeling on this is that the french port front porch forum posting goes out with tax payments will be accepted by check money order credit card through the website um and then and we don't have to say no cash accepted, um, but I mean, really, we are saying no cash is going to be accepted. That's your policy. So do you want to say that the policy of the, of the select board is to not have cash taken by the town office? However, you can contact Denise, as it were, to make an arrangement to get I, I don't know. How would you say that? Um, I'm just trying to figure out how you would say that. In the because front. if we start to make exceptions here and exceptions there, and somebody wants to just bring in $100 and somebody else wants to, well, it's just $950 and somebody else says, but yeah, you know, it's only $2,500. We begin to, uh, I think uh, treating everyone um, the same is really important so that everyone has the same expectation of what services they can expect from the office. John and the, John and then Sharon. Uh, Sharon first, then John. I think that 
the number 30 surprised me. That's, that's like a lot of people that I would rather communicate with in a way that supports them. Um, I think, I don't know them at all. You guys know them. I imagine a good chunk of them won't bother to take us up on it and we'll be able to whittle it down gently over maybe even just one year of, where, of this is how it's going to work. John's going to come to your house. John's going to, you know, John's going to do this. It's an accommodation that I, I think for, for, because we're so out, we're laid out of the gates. We've already had a communication that Denise really had to manage. If we're able to do something that if we're able to offer an accommodation and maybe Denise, the communication just says, if you, if you need an accommodation because you were planning on cash, please call the select board. Yeah. Yeah. That is a great sentence. Yeah. Did you, did you capture that sentence, Katie? Oh, where? Oh, okay. Yeah. She got it. And that, that's what I was more or less thinking. Thank you, Sharon. Um, you know, I, I seem to get on this soapbox every six months. I really worry for the people, the people who struggle in our town. And I don't see any of them on this screen, um, including myself. I, I worry for them. And I think it's easy to be, all well, for all of us to be somewhat dismissive. I don't know what any person's particular circumstances are. There are people who are legally blind can't drive and have other family issues and i don't know what might crop up and I, you know we do this we have meals on wheels for people who can't get out of their homes we have all sorts of accommodations and if people are willing to offer up for the literally the handful the five i think that's something we should do and i think given the the cost of taxes in this town they're huge and um, I think it's the least we can do as, as townspeople to help, help them out. So I, I have no problem. And I thank you, Sharon, um, in helping out those, those few people. All right, before we go on, could, who, could whoever's on the phone at 802-505-8274, please identify yourself so we have you for the minutes. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me, Steve Whitaker. Okay, that's so that's you, Steve, the, the 505-8274 number? It is, yep. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, any other comments or thoughts on this? So, Sharon, did you want to make that a motion? Uh, I, will, I will. How are we, I think we should get really crisp on how and from whom a note is going on to Front Porch Forum. Right, I'm trying to figure out who... Um, I can post something on Front Porch Forum, I guess, if, this, if the calls are going to come to me. I would like to run it by the rest of the board. If I can get you to look at it before I post it, I would appreciate that. Yep. I think some, some wordsmithing, so we've all bought into the message, so <laughs> because we're, we might all have to defend it. Right. Yes, I make the motion that we adopt an approach that is no cash accepted, no, no, no tax payments accepted in cash at the town offices. Uh, however, we acknowledge that people, some people like to pay in cash and we will communicate, figure out a way to communicate. If that is your preference and what you were expecting, please, we will, we will make an accommod we will work with you to accommodate you. Please contact Denise Wheeler Select Board Chair. So I guess I'm a little I'm thinking we sh maybe don't want to be as generous with that wording. I think we might want to if we could say it somehow that we understand or something. We don't want to just like offer <coughs> to go to the bank all the time for people. Is there a way to word it such that if there's a hardship and you need help, you need an accommodation and have to pay in cash, something so it doesn't just leave the whole door open. Because we don't want to be taking 20 or 30 people to the bank. Right. If you have difficulty 
uh, paying in other than cash to contact Denise Wheeler and we will see what we can work out to accommodate you. And that's what I would do. I would say, hop in the car, get your maximally, and we'll go down by credit unions free for a cashier's check and we'll set it up. I, I really don't think people, very many people will take us up on it, but I, I think that the value of, of offering it is huge. So could we say first off though, that, you know, as you're paying your, we would, we. Denise, we're getting into messaging. Let me dial back my motion. Okay. So, so I make the motion that, that our 2020 approach be that we won't accept cash payments for taxes in the town offices. Um, and, but we understand and acknowledge that some people might be relying on cash or actually need to do cash. So we're going to figure something out for those people. Okay. I'll second that. All right. So it takes the, it takes it off of the office staff. That was my main goal. Yes. All right. Sandra. Um, I did want to post tomorrow and advise the town's people that the bills are in the mail. They w went uh, to the post office this morning. So they are expecting them. And yeah. if they don't receive one, of course, they would want to circle back to the office and get a duplicate or whatever they need to get their bill. Um, so um, I, I would like to do that posting. I don't have to talk about this issue. It, you, you will wordsmith it between yourselves, but I think it's important that folks know their tax bills are en route. Yeah. And, um, and I just want to make sure that you as a group were okay with that communication. Yeah, if we're just saying the tax bills are in the mail, if there's a problem or a question, they should contact um, they should contact you. Well, it would be a, much along the lines of earlier uh, of earlier communications, but we're gonna do, but you need, and we'll leave out how we will accept payment. You will follow up with another post that will um, indicate that as a select board policy, payments are to be made by cash uh, by credit card, check or money order unless an accommodation needs to be made. Right, a special a special yeah. kind of accommodation. So I'll, so I'll, I'll leave that it up to you folks. And then uh, they also should be aware of the due dates. So I would include that in my communication as well, which this year is September 16th and November 16th. Yeah, so I think we need to go back to the motion and I seconded it. Sharon's raising her hands. I don't know if that means you want to change it, but we should probably vote on it. I did not say policy. I said an approach. And I and that's what I meant. I, I would want to revisit this um, next year if if we're in different times. Well we can say for this tax year or this tax season or something. I would I would be more comfortable with approach. Right, but do we want to define how long the approach is for? That's what I said. I said for 2020, Katie, right? Oh, okay. All right. I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Yep. Approach for 2020. Okay. Rose has got her thumb up. Did you want to say something, Rose? Yeah, I had a question. Um, does this only pertain to tax payments or are there other things that people would come into the town office and pay with cash, like licensing a dog or getting some other kind of license or something. But Barbara, Sandra, Barbara, can you answer that? At, at this point, I, we're, the town clerk is not accepting cash, as far as I know. And I'll let Barbara speak to that. But the policy is no cash in the office. People sometimes drop, because the town, well, right now the town office is closed. So the public can't really come in, but they drop cash in the drop box. And if they drop it in there and then they're, we get it the next day, we have to take it. We're not gonna chase them down to return their $9 in cash for a dog license. Um, and I've even gotten cash in the mail. So really? cash does come in even with the town office closed. Wow, people are still mailing cash. That's unbelievable. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Holy moly. I thought that went out the window decades ago. 
But, but I really appreciate Rose asking that question and bringing it up because perhaps this same uh, posting, Denise, could refer to tax payments and other tra business transactions. Fees or licenses, yeah. Fees or, fees or licenses. Okay, we'll work on it. So I'll, I'll work on something tomorrow and get it around to the board to look at. Isn't, All right. fees, isn't fees or licenses Judy's purview? Fees and licenses are in Judy's purview, yes. And I believe she's not, uh, Barbara, uh, it's my understanding that she's not taking cash. I think let's just stay focused on the, on the, on the property tax payments. I mean, I hear that you're getting cash occasionally and we might be. We don't want to open up Pandora's box. Thank you. The words. Yes. Thank you. All right. Are you ready to vote? Um, where did Cliff go? Cliff? I'm here. Okay. I, I, you moved. I was going to do voting and you used to be in the upper left hand corner and now you're not. All right, Rose. Aye. Sharon. Aye. John. Aye. Cliff. Aye. Okay, and I'm an aye. All right, thank you very much. Is there anything else you would like to ask Sandra while she's on? If not, you can stay Sandra or maybe you'd like the rest of the evening off. It's up to you. <laughs> I think I can leave the meeting in your uh, good hands. Thank you. All right. Talk, talk soon. Thank you. Bye, Sandra. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, Thanks. Sandra. Take care. Thank you. All righty. So, um, operations manager, status. You sent. You just sent us some stuff about the radar signs. Um, and I did contact the school, and I think I forwarded everybody, Brian. Olkowski, I think guess has that how you say his name, his email, and he had a, a list of questions for us. Um, I thought, did we put the list of questions in the folder? Oh yeah, here it is. Yeah, he had um, five different questions. And he's not able to join us tonight because he's taken a couple of days off. So he wants a short proposal of how the cost would be allocated. And we had talked about half. So um, I think we would we would say to question number one, half the cost. Is that what I'm remembering from everybody when we talked last time? Okay. Um, description of the item along with a picture. And Toby had sent us the um, the specs of it with the vendor um, statement of how much it how much it would cost, so we can send him that rationale for the item and why it is needed. So I think you know if you go back and look at the minutes, the rationale, and he's brand new, but we've had over the years complaints and significant amount of complaints about the speed on Lightning Ridge. So I don't know if we need to go back and pull out all the minutes. Um, I would think we don't have, we shouldn't, or we don't need to. I think he needs to just know that it's been a significant amount of complaints over the years, period. And this is for the safety of the um, folks at the school, but most importantly, the children. So I'm sure there's probably reasons why he's got to have all this, but um, it also include the invoice. Um, what we have that because Toby gave it to us. Yeah, he's got to propose this to the school board, and he needs to have a packet to right. present. You know, it's like any invoice. You know. So I think we have everything that I can put together and just email to him and the, um, our representatives and the principal. And see and see if we can get them to pay for half of this. Yeah, he wants to know where it will be stored. I don't know what he, I'm not exactly sure what he means. Toby, do you have an idea where would it be stored? At the garage? Beside the road. 
going to be on the road all the time. Even in the winter? Sure. Yeah. People feed in the winter. Yeah. Okay, well, this is the, don't forget, this is the one that it's movable. Right. It still stands on a signpost. Right. Okay. Is this something that we can delegate this response, packaging the response? Can we delegate that to Toby as operations manager? That would be fine with me. I love that idea. Toby is not saying anything, so I think he's good. Maybe he's froze. <laughs> For, Toby, are you still there? Toby? Well, I can get with Toby after the meeting. I'm still here. Oh, okay. We'd like to delegate this response to Brian Olkowski to you. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Toby. Thank you. This, I'm, I'm looking for ways to take stuff off Denise's plate and near the, near the brain on this one. Okay, so other than that, I didn't have anything else under operations because I didn't know what else you might have, Toby. Um. This operations is normal. Okay, very good. Does the board have any questions? Oh, Cliff? I had a question for Toby. Toby, did were you able to talk to Seacoast about uh, temporarily disabling the alarm system for the uh, voting tomorrow at the town hall? I talked to them, remember? I talked to them. Did we get a response? Because I didn't see anything. <laughs> I think I sent an email after I talked to the, the Vermont rep the day it was going off and making Barbara and Judy crazy. And they said for security, safety reasons and insurance reasons, they cannot disable it. And that's when he gave me the directions about the button to push mm -hmm. that will disable it for 24 hours. Okay. Yeah, so if it goes off, you just have to hit the silence alarm button. Right. It goes off for 24 hours. That's okay. right, Sharon. Thank you. Uh, I have a different topic, but I, I want to bring it up before t just to report out just information for everybody. But I want to do it before Toby and where's Alfred? There he is. Uh, before the two of them leave. So just let me know. Okay. You want to do it now? Yeah. So, okay. yeah. So Rose and I um, followed up and reached out to the handful of uh, folks that we identified at must have been two meetings ago um, to talk about tree health. Yep. And um, I, I heard of interest from several people, but uh, only was able to actually, Rose and I were only able to talk. The only person who could come at, at the time that we, that we had all, most of us could do was, was Stephanie. So uh, we met with Stephanie um, and raised the, brought forward the concern that I heard um, and brought to the board. And so one thing that, that came out of that is Stephanie wasn't aware that we had shifted or that we had switched our road standards to the state standards. So that was a disconnect. Um, certainly probably the, the, on the part of the board and also, but on Toby and Alfred, you know, we made a we made a switch that was really um, a big deal for people who had worked on the roads committee a few years ago. So that was something that we that we had to process in our conversation with Stephanie. But that led us to something that actually, when I was reading the minutes from the last meeting that I didn't attend, you guys talked about um, looking at the road standards, and I think it was from that meeting, and actually looking at the, the the difference between the CALIS standards and the state standards. And coincidentally, that is exactly where Stephanie went and she volunteered to do that analysis and bring it back to us. Um, so I thought that's great. <laughs> Yay. Um, well, I, yeah, think, and I think if you look at the minutes when you adopted the state um, standard, John also allowed that the CALIS standards that were in place were an addendum to the state standards. So they're right. still in place as far as we understand. Right, but what is right. one of those differences is the question. I, and I don't know, I don't know the answer and I didn't see the answer to that in the minutes from February. That also coincidentally was a meeting I wasn't at. So, 
and I so I don't know how much discussion there was that isn't in the minutes. Um, but that being that being said, I didn't see it on the record anymore. Okay, here's you know what I what I would look look for and, and expect Stephanie with her commitment and energy to bring back is okay. Here's what we have lost, um, and and have that discussion and awareness as a board because anyway. So that anyway. Was, I'm just I'm bringing this information back to the board, and then I want to pull. It, go ahead, John. I'm going to pull up my notes and. Okay. And, I, and I wanted to mention something too, but go ahead, John. Just as a point of clarification, Toby is correct that we adopted the state standards, um, but in that uh, motion, uh, we also maintained the town standards where not in conflict with the state standard, where they augment, where they right. might augment the state standards and not uh, be operating conflict with state standards. That those those parts of the town standards would, would be maintained. Yeah, that was clear in the minutes. And we did, Rose pulled them up and we shared that with Stephanie. That was really yeah. cool. Yeah, because I want to make sure Stephanie knows that that's what we did. Right. What we don't know is is where are they in conflict and we've lost something. That was kind of the question. And that's what she's going to do? Yeah. OK. Yeah, and I don't, on, I, don't and believe that there's, I don't believe that there's any conflict. It just, uh, and again, just understand that we're now under the municipal road permit that has set standards that we need to meet every year. And for the most part, they were already things that the town of Calais's um, road standards had already met. And if I remember right, the Calais road standards were applauded because they were more stringent and more thoughtful than what the state had originally done in their standards and they were they were used quite i know that the v-trans folks pass those around to quite a few different towns when we adopted them but i'm glad that um stephanie's taking a look and in that same regard um i had a note about contacting cvrpc and the state with regard to some kind of um an inventory about tree health and trees and um, the point John brought up about how that chloride in the summer can affect the trees. So anyways, I reached out to CVRPC. They don't have any buddy there currently and they don't have any grants for something like this. I reached out to Joanne Garten. If you remember, she's the one that did the ash tree inventory. She's really very good. She's on vacation. So when I get an answer from Joanne, I'll provide a further update. I think one of the things, well, actually, Rose, let, I, I'll, Rose, you talk and I. Oh. I, I just had a quick question. Um, I looked and couldn't find in my records or on the website, the report about the resilient. Um, rural roads? Yeah, rural roads. Do, it's, do you I, have, I see, it's there somewhere. If not, we can, re, we can repost it. Okay. Yeah. Do you know, was it in 2019 or 2018? It was mm, 2018, I think, Rose. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. I was looking around for it and I couldn't seem to find it. Yeah, that was a really helpful report that Joanne did. Yeah. I think it would be really, it would be helpful for us if it's true that we haven't lost anything. And I'm, I'm, I think it will be, it will be great and it will be really good for Stephanie if she confirms we haven't lost anything. Yeah, um, no, I mean, that's why she's the perfect person to do it. Yeah, no, she cares deeply, deeply. Yeah. But if, if it's true we haven't lost anything, then we should hang on to our narrative that we have our own standards because we've, we've lost that. As we talk about it, we say state standards, and that's what, you know, what I said, and Stephanie was like, ugh. Um, so it's really important that for all the reasons you just said, Denise, that, that, that we've been applauded for our standards. Yeah. And if we haven't lost anything, then that's the narrative is we have our own standards and that's what sets our bar. But maybe I'm asking this as a question, the municipal roads general permit, the standards that go with that, is that by statute? Is that a VTRANS procedure and policy? What What is that? It's, I assume it's something from the state. VTRANS policy. 
Yeah. It's a what? A trans policy that they adopt together with ANR. Okay. So it's not by, it's not like it's a law. Well, okay. it's born out of law that they, they, they have, they're delegated the authority from statute. to. Because I know, you know, we get charged a fee every year for this municipal roads general permit stuff. So. My, my bet is uh, they do not go through rulemaking. Well, I know they don't. They just adopt a memo, the standards by memo. Um, so. so it's not an MOU then, it's just a memo. Well, they might have an MOU separate and aside, but there was the first time there was a memo signed by David Mears, then Commissioner Mears, yeah. DEC, and whoever, Sue Minter or somebody from uh, AOT. And then they said attached R and these are R. And that's when we pushed back on that. It said, says who? Says you. Um, and they held us. There's an added 10% benefit if you adopt these standards. That's how it used to be. I don't know if that's still the, the case, but rather than 80% reimbursement for our road projects or certain projects, bridges and stuff, uh, we got 90%. <laughs> by adopting these these augmented uh, standards, road standards that are designed to, to mitigate and minimize runoff of stormwater, sediment laden stormwater into our streams and tribs. So um, <coughs> we, we, by way of background, we, we developed our own standards and went through a process that we initiated with the attorney at AOT and listened to the and they did agree that our standards met or exceeded their their standards. Yeah. Um, so we were able to adopt them. But now but, I don't I don't know what these new state standards say. Well, remember. Whether, I'm sorry, John. Go ahead, uh, remember, v, v Trans had to approve our standards. Remember. Mm -hmm. Right. So 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 that I guess I'm actually going to take that down as another question of. Do they do they recognize that we still have our standards? I I'm going to ask that we that we all keep in mind that we still have we have our standards. We can't right. make that narrative or we will forget that fact. Well, and we never we never said we're going to throw away those standards. So I'm assuming we still have them. Right, but but we have I heard I have heard that said. I've heard it from you know I don't, it doesn't need to be pounded home, but I've heard it said from people in, in this room. We don't have our own standards anymore. We can't say that. We have to say we do have our standards. Oh my goodness, we got great standards, and we got the state standards. So woohoo! Um, anyway, I wanted to just let everybody know we had that conversation, and I want to say again out loud that I think that I'm gonna that when we are doing things like those road standards, um, we need to involve the folks who have worked so hard on the roads, and make sure that we keep always that tie to our rural environment, our environmental stewardship um, it, as part of our road conversations. Yeah, I think that, yeah. All right, are we ready to move on? Um, Alfred, can you give us a status of roadside mowing, please? Uh, roadside mowing is all done. Uh, we've done. We did the four roads that were in question, or it was halt was in hold, whatnot. They're all done. I uh, have switched the the mower head to the flail mower, so we are ready to go around again and hit some of the spots where brush is hanging out in the road. Um, turns out we don't need to buy a set of teeth for the flail mower um, because the other mower, the other unit that was there had decent teeth in it. Uh, did have to change two or three very large hydraulic hoses, um, but that is done and all set. So we sort of escaped the bullet on the teeth, but we're, we're ready to go now. So that's where we are with the roadside mowing. Did I lose you or nobody's saying nothing? Hello? 
We're all saying nothing. I tried, uh, okay. getting, I tried to get uh, Peter's audio back yeah. for him. It Are you, sounds you, like it's still pretty broken up. Am I coming through now? Yeah, Sorry, I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't get my thing unmuted. Come Thank on. you, Alfred. Is there any comments or questions from the board to, about the mowing? Oh, Peter sounds like he's broadcasting from the inside of a washing machine. Yeah, Peter, could you type out your question or comment? Because okay. we, we yep. just, it's, it's impossible to hear you. All right. Um, I'll re-mute you, Peter. Okay, so while Peter's typing out his question, I already updated you about the inventory piece that hopefully Joanne will get back to me when she gets back from vacation because I think that ties in with the road standards. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Alfred, did we get the wood chipper? I haven't heard a thing about the wood chipper. I don't know where that stands. Um, last I knew that money was available because the, right, the loan went through. Yeah. But that's, that's all I know. I haven't heard of anything, if it's ordered, if it's on its way. I don't know. Who's, who's heading that up? I don't even know that. As far as I know, it was ordered because Sandra got the bank loan. Okay, but who's communicating with the dealer? John? Or is that is that happening? So, so maybe there's a, a gap here. Sorry, Alfred. Um, my understanding was... Sandra was going to send them a $500 deposit, then pursue the loan, then send them the check for the loan uh, once she gets the loan for the balance, and shipping was included, and then Sandra was going to tell them to reach out to you to arrange for a shipping date and a drop-off date and all that. So, so that's okay. between you and Andrew, you should probably reach out to her if she hasn't gotten back to you, Alfred. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I just, that's the first I'd heard of it, but maybe the email is on its way or a phone call, or I don't know, maybe they're waiting till they get the check to cut, to reach out to me. I don't know. I just haven't, I know. hadn't heard exactly. anything. I don't know if Sandra sent the check, so you should probably reach out to Sandra and find out what, what, what the status of that. Yeah. I can't find the email right now, but I recall Sandra sending an email saying, that the, the deposit had been sent. She got the loan from the bank. So Alfred, I think some initiative on your part to reach out to Sandra and the vendor and find out what's going on. I'll get right on it. Okay, very good. All right, anything else, Alfred or Toby? Uh, just an update on the George Road. The culvert is all put together and set into place, and I believe today they're starting to backfill. And who's doing that work? That is Blue Mountain Trucking and Excavating. Okay. Yep, that's all the right. George Road culvert that you asked about money going out tonight. Okay, so Peter's got his question. Thank you for washing the, you are going to vertical mow the roadside brush on the four roads around Bliss Pond. Can you do these roads first so as to not bring in any wild chervil seeds? So that's Peter's question, Alfred. Sure, I can do it in any order you want me to. Absolutely. He asked, he talked to me on the roadside there about that. And I, yeah, I don't have a problem where we start. Okay. All right. Anything else, to, anything else from the board, John, did you have anything you wanted to ask? Yeah. Um, to Alfred, um, there was some ditching work done on, what is that? Number 10 Pond Road. Uh, nope. Wasn't ditching. There was a washout where the road was washing out and kind of caving in so i we went over and put some riprap on the edge of the bank to support the road right um and the, so that's what that was about did so you get a complaint been, or i got a complaint um that the crew had dug it was digging ditch and then threw the spoils over the bank 
along the lake. I, I had a feeling it might be something other than that. Uh, yeah, absolutely but, not true at all. Guys, it was. I know you guys yeah. are very careful about sediment in the lake. So the representation yeah. was that whatever crew members worked on digging a ditch on the other uh, on the far side of the road, that not the lake side, of the road, but the side opposite um, the lake side, um, that there was a ditch being installed and the diversion to keep the water from going in the lake, which was quote unquote good, but then the spoils from the ditch digging was then uh, put over the other side of the bank. And that was not the case. There was also- Not, not even close, not even close. There was no okay. ditch made on the opposite side. It was, it was, we dumped a load of stone, riprap in the road and then placed it down over the bank <laughs> to support the road. So there was a representation that sediment was going in the in the lake as a result of your placing material, but it sounds like you placed material because the road was washing out to stabilize it, correct? That's right. Absolutely. Okay. Good. I'm glad yep. we asked. It was Sharon? good to get this story. Sharon? Can we, Denise, would you mind going back to Peter's note? I just don't understand it. Thank you for washing. I think he's talking about washing the mower. Because remember we said to pressure wash the, the mower and the attachments before doing any mowing on Old West Church and those other roads that we talked about. I can't remember all the names now. Was it Fowler maybe or? Okay. So we, had, we had asked that the, that the road crew pressure wash it before they mowed so as not to take any seeds from other invasive species over there. And I think that that's what Peter is saying. Thank you for that. Is that a best, Peter, maybe you can just quickly type in, is that a best practice known to work or is that just something we're trying? That was what, what the select board, I actually re requested be done, right. Sharon. And that is the best practice. You're supposed to wash your, like you wash your boat to prevent milfoil from being transferred from one lake to another. Right. Um, you're, you should be, washing your equipment, your mowing equipment between infected or in, in infested, infested areas that have, have invasives in them and before you go to another one. Okay. All right, anything else for Alfred or Toby? Are you ready to move on? I, um, I have something for you guys. Oh, wait a minute, Rose has a question before I, you. I, I found the email from Sandra about the proceeds from the wood chipper, and I sent it to everybody, including Alfred. Okay, thanks, Rose. Okay, Alfred, you had one more thing? Yeah, I'm just wondering, it's August of another year, and I've not been appointed yet. I'm just wondering when that might happen or if it's going to. We are um, currently reviewing um, positions so okay what, should yeah. i be worried because i am well i'm sorry because I, I mean this this whole and it, which brings me to another question is that the whole negotiations with the union i have been completely in the dark about and i'm just wondering if i could be somewhat up to date with that well, those are, I think both discussions would be something we would want to do in executive session. And, okay. not, and not in a public meeting. Um, you, you know, negotiations are ongoing, so you know that much. And you were gone for three months or whatever it was during negotiations. So I think you kind of fell out of the, fell off the saddle there. So, um, that doesn't mean that I can't be back on the saddle, I don't think, but maybe I'm wrong. No, I didn't say that. I am very much back here, very much involved in, in managing the road crew. Yep. Well, I don't, like I said, I think anything about negotiations is considered confidential, so we can't do that here and now. Okay. So can we, can you put me on an agenda for an executive session soon? Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay. Yep. That should do. All right. Thank you so much. What is that? What are those bell things that I keep hearing? That's my cell phone going off. Oh. I just silented it. 
<laughs> okay. It's a pretty sound. It's re it's relaxing, Denise. <laughs> yes, it, it is. It sounds like wind chimes. Very nice. Yes. 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 Hey, Cliff, you had your hand up. Did you have a question? Who did? Cliff had his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Cliff. Yeah, um, Alfie, I just wanted to give you a heads up. I don't know if it will be an issue or not. Um, the other day I was making a trek down past the town hall and uh, the dust was pretty high on the road and the crew came along shortly thereafter and treated it because on my return trip it wasn't dusty anymore. But uh, it makes me wonder if this could be an issue when it gets around to actually when our contractor gets around to actually painting the town hall. Oh, we want to make efforts to make sure that there is no dust getting kicked up and mixed into the wet paint as it before it dries. Yeah, good point. So I'll kind of monitor um, his progress and give you a heads up uh, when he's painting those sides that are closest to the road where it could be an issue. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Oh, and I have yeah. one more thing. I'm sorry. Good point, Cliff. We don't want paint to get dirt in it. Um, there, the barrels, the barrels at Curtis Pond that keep getting stolen. Why somebody wants to steal one of those barrels, I don't know. Um, there was a couple of suggestions. One was boulders, and you. No, nope, absolutely there. not. Cannot use boulders. Sorry to interrupt, but I we can't put boulders. It's a it's a safety issue. Okay, that, well, that, was liability. My, that was my question because I was concerned about the boulders like in my limited knowledge when it came time for plowing or whatever but what about yeah. barrels filled with sand? So, nope again illegal can't do it. Why is that? Because if a car leaves our traveled portion of the road and hits a barrel of sand and that barrel of sand comes through the windshield it is it is our liability those barrels are 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 made for safety if they if somebody runs into the barrel it's just going to fly away it's not going to come into the windshield so okay. we can't we can't put a solid structure in the right of way purposely okay i wasn't aware of that i wasn't aware of that that's yep. good information to have yep yep so i can put more barrels i can put more barrels there to get us through you know the next two or three weeks of of seasonable weather uh, I meant to get there today, but I just it had a, a lot going on. Monday's busy for me. Yeah, Mondays are busy for everybody. Um, so okay. I will put cones up tomorrow, more or more barrels up tomorrow, and maybe that'll alleviate the problem. How much do those barrels cost? Uh, they were some barrels that we got on a grant project years ago. Um, they're probably like fifty or sixty bucks a piece. Sounds like as I recall. Sounds like they're disappearing quickly. We've, we, I put three there, and we're down to one. We've only lost two. Oh, okay. All, all summer long. Okay. So, yeah, it's not, it's not as drastic as it sounds. Okay. Um, so I'll put a couple more up, and like I said, it's, we've only got a short couple more weeks probably of this weather, swimming weather, and yeah. it's going to change. So I think they, you know, that's they, probably our best solution. Do those barrels say property of the town of Callis or anything on them? Because that might deter people from st stealing them. Right. Usually we mark, we write on it with a magic marker. Yeah. Uh, just said you know just says town of Callis. So I can make sure that they are written on, and that might help. Yeah. Okay, Sharon, you wanted to say something, Sharon? Um, yeah, but finish this and come back to me. Oh, okay. Um, okay, I just wanted to double check because I didn't have a chance to put it on the agenda, but I wanted to just ask. All right, thank you. Yeah, I don't think it, I don't, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead, Alfred. Yeah, I just don't think it needs, a, a, you know, an action by the select board. I'll just put some more barrels up and, yeah. and that'll take care of it. Yeah, I was just curious if we could put sand-filled barrels or boulders and it sounds like for... The reasons you stated, we can't do that. So, so Sharon right. had a Sharon had her hand up in Cliff. Cliff, is yours related to barrels? No, I just wanted to point out that uh, Peter has sent another text to everyone, so we oh, want yeah. to get that on the record. So he, Peter says he can't t type fast enough. Joanne Garten's palace resilient right of way action plan was approved last summer. 
and rec was approved last summer recommends washing the machinery. Right. That, and that's what I wanted to just make sure we get on the record. So I think the, the implication of, of Peter's no is it's a, and John said this too, it's a best practice that, you know, we should keep in mind, it goes back to what the conversation earlier, how do we integrate our road maintenance with environmental stewardship? Um, this would be a best practice if there were a way to do it townwide. Right. Okay, so Sharon, did you want to say something else or was that it? That was it. Oh, okay. All right, are we ready to move on? We have David Healy waiting to give us an update. Oh, um, I got Okay, if, if you're done with me, I'll, I'll sign out. Yeah, you're welcome to stay if you want to hear about H966, but other than that, have a good night. Right, okay, done. very good. Is that Selfie. David Green or David Healy? Looks like he hasn't had a haircut in a while. Get your I'm mandolin. Gonna get on I'm going to wait till November. <laughs> I was going to say something <laughs> more, but I won't. All right. So uh, Denise wanted me to talk tonight about uh, some material that I sent her, and I do not believe whether she sent it to everybody or not. Yes, anyway, I did. So yeah. under under H nine six six. The state's um, going to spend between 11 and $17 million on short-term broadband initiatives under their Connectivity Now program. And one of the features in H966 was that the communication union districts could review any proposals that came in. And they're doing these in three series. This is the first series that we got a week ago Monday, a week ago today. And in it was a, one of the proposals came from a company called RTO, which I am I'm sorry to tell you, I can't remember what they stand for, but it's not that important. They are proposing to put a dirigible balloon someplace near Kent's Corner, um, 2000 feet on a tether that's rewindable in a storm. How that happens, I'm not sure. So this balloon would be able to serve, uh, provide potential broadband service to 489 people in Calus. Um, the, they didn't, uh, so, you know, the communication union district has a, an authority to review any proposals that came in. We do not have any veto power over them, but I thought I'd reach out to Denise and the board to see whether, you know, the board had an opinion on this or not. Um, I do know that, um, you know, the speed, well, they said the speed could be up to 50 megabits per second, which is quite high. The problem with the balloon from a technology standpoint is it floats, the wind does blow it, so it gets off course. I can't get off course, so you might lose intermittent. And then any wind storm, and I don't know what the maximum wind is where they have to wind it down. So in a storm where you want your internet, this thing is not available. So for that reason, and the other reason is that I know that um, Cloud Alliance has also put in a proposal that we haven't seen yet to upgrade its um, fixed wireless um, propagation to stronger technology that we'll probably see today or tomorrow. Um, so having learned that the town of Callis had no idea this proposal was coming, I find that a you know a second reason to be not very supportive of this project, but I thought I'd let the select board, you know, discuss it or have an opinion on it. I'll try to answer any questions you have. Um, the limited knowledge I have is the Department of Public Service sent, sent me a list of the 489 addresses that this balloon would would serve. I made a map of that, and that's what I sent to Denise. Yeah, and I sent that around, and it should be in the folder if you think we need to call it up. But um, the one, the project that you told me about was some kind of this giant balloon flying it's over Kent's corner or something. Yeah, I sent the the link to the company itself, which has a photo of the balloon. Oh, I didn't look. I don't know the exact dimensions of this balloon. It's actually, it actually looks like a dirigible. It's not really a, a round balloon. It sort of looks like a dirigible. Um, and it sits at 2,000 feet above the ground on a tether. 
And um, tethered to what? To the ground. To this winch that brings it back in when it when it's um, when it's windy. Um, and the reason, I mean, if you look at the photo, I mean, if the image of the service area, you can tell that the center was in Kent's Corner. And I think the other reason it's in Kent's Corner is because there is fiber, you know, consolidated and Comcast has fiber lines right to Kent's Corner. So they'll be tying into the fiber line that's there. Why now, I never got any of that information. So um, it spectrum. sounds like this is kind of in the back door a little bit, how they're doing this. I mean, well, how, are, how, are town, how, are, how are our town folks like you, our representative, supposed to react to these things? What do they want to know? It's, it's a good question. Now, the, the CV Fiber created a committee to review all the proposals, and we got like five proposals from the first round of applications. And one of the criteria I put in there was, you know, is it consistent with community needs and wants? Um, we have a lot of others, including, does it interfere with our plan to develop fiber in the next, you know, year? Um, does it? You know, the, the need for fiber is pretty large, but is this the solution when there's possibly better solutions? And so why that's would, another criteria. Why would we spend all this money on a temporary fix? Why not just put it into... I mean, uh, good, qu good question, Denise. This, the, any solution using this money has to be up and running by December 31st of this year. So there are very few solutions that can be done that quickly. So fixed wireless, uh, like Cloud Alliance or VTEL offer can be done in six months. Um, extensions of fiber, if we had fiber, could be done in six months, but not very far. Um, so it's sort of like this, they're asking for a million dollars to put this one dirigible up. And oh. my sense is that Michael Bernbaum's proposal, which I haven't seen yet, are gonna be less than a million dollars. Um, and he, he, his coverage area in Calus will increase, maybe not as much as this dirigible says it can do 489 properties, 95% well, of the time. Well, and it makes you wonder if it's gonna be taken down because it's windy What's going to happen in the winter when we have these snowstorms and things like that? <laughs> Great question, Denise. I, I, am, I am very skeptic of this whole I, this whole project, and, but so I wanted to make sure I, I wanted to make sure the town heard about it. Do others have questions or thoughts that we want to send David as our representative away with? John? I mean, this is coming at us fast and furious. And if it were fiber optic cable, I'd say, let's go. But these uh, folks coming from Framingham, Mass, with their million dollar dirigible plan to serve a, a <laughs> town, uh, I got to wonder what the fee is going to be. Um, and, and, you know, the, there is an issue with wireless technology. I'm going to put it right out there that I have. Um, and I know that a number of residents are concerned about the exposure to the wireless signal. I don't know what this broadcasts. There's a lot of questions in this. I just don't like anything rushed through without, a, without the public having input, aside from standard kind of technology like fiber optic cable, which we all know and would love to have everywhere. I did not know it made it all the way to Kent Corner, though, by the way, David. I, I knew it. I thought it came to Maple Corner. I didn't know it went all the way to Kent. Yeah. Fiber optic, that is. Yeah. And then is there, uh, Belco is running a fiber line to the substation in the next year. Is there any kind of public hearing process or do they just, I mean, what's, no, these what's the process? These grant decisions are going to be made by the Commissioner of Public Service and she can ignore whatever the Communications Union District says. But if the town would like to go on the record one way or the other, I'll be happy to put that in and our, our recommendation to the board to the department um i mean right now i'm you know there's a four-person committee ruining these things and so far we're saying no if the board wants to say yes then we can you know modify our decision but if you guys want to weigh in saying we think this is not such a great idea i'll put that in our notes yeah i think i guess th i would be supportive of that what do other people think rose I had a question about whether or not 
this would be consistent with the historic district of Kent's Corner or if it would matter or interfere. Um, and in general, it, it doesn't it doesn't sound like it's the best solution for Callis residents, um, but I was wondering also if there was any implications of being in the historic district. Well, or you know, if maybe if they wrote uh, Hindenburg on the side, it would be considered more historic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 1932, anyway. <laughs> so, um, Cliff, Sharon, any thoughts? Um, I heard a thought a second ago that I really agreed with, and I and <laughs> it, it left. I know it's getting close to pumpkin time. Uh huh. Um, I appreciate that David's here and that he understands this so much better than I do. Yeah, and thank you for bringing it to our attention, David. We had no clue. At least I did. Yeah, we had we had we got seven days to reply, seven business days to reply to the proposal. So tomorrow is the day they have to have a our answer. So. Unbelievable. So they really don't want. So they really don't want our input. Um, they, I mean, it was only because the House of Representatives demanded that <laughs> the communication union districts have any say at all. It was done. The administration not not paying attention to the kind of stuff we're dealing with. Yeah. So Cliff had his hand up. I don't know why sometimes the space bar works and other times it doesn't. At any rate, um, yeah, I definitely uh, echo uh, John's comments earlier. Uh, agree with that. I, I would suggest that the board seriously consider uh, formally going on record as being opposed to this and ask David to carry that message forward for us. Would you like that in the form of a motion, David? Oh, I'd love it. Okay. I can tell you the town of the town of Peachum Select Board did the same thing. They they passed a motion that were opposed to the balloon in Peachum. Would we be opposed to that or any short term? No, we're gonna just. I think we should just deal with the callous one myself. Okay, John. Well, we should have bases for our rejection of the proposal. Uh, yeah. One is historic district, despite it re re uh, resembling the Hindenburg. Um, <laughs> The second is it's it's too short a time frame for us to as a community beyond the select board to have a to consider this proposal. Right. Implications, cost, long term maintenance, uh, you know, effectiveness, and, and three, we have concerns that it could operate to effectively displace the build out, further build out of and, and financing of our uh, communications districts build out a fiber optic cable, which is what our community is on record as supporting. So I'd like so, that to be in our message. David. Okay, so is that your motion? That this, yes. the, the Cala Select Board opposes this project for the following reasons, and Katie can, Katie's got it in the minutes. Um, I would second John's motion. And Katie, 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 Katie's, really, Katie's really fast at typing up the minutes, so she should have it um, to us tomorrow. Cliff? Right. Cliff? Peter's added some additional comments. I believe he sent them out to everyone. When the state of Connecticut put an inflated building up because it was the cheapest solution, it was a different budget that had to pay for the maintenance of the inflated building, which far exceeded the cost of a more permanent solution. Who is going to pay for the workers to put up and take down and maintain it? So perhaps there's an amendment, a friendly amendment to John's motion as an, an additional concern of hidden costs and who would assume those? I'm sorry, Cliff, could you say that again? I didn't hear you. Well, perhaps there's a friendly amendment to John's motion, uh, additional concern of hidden costs and who would foot the bill? Yeah, is that, are you making that friendly amendment? Yes. Okay, I'll second the friendly amendment. And so John's accepted it. Yeah, he put his thumb up. Okay, so are you ready to vote? Rose? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Cliff? Aye. John? Aye. And I'm an aye. And Katie, if you can just even type up that motion, 
um, you should have David's email address because I had forwarded stuff to you to put in the folder. Can I ask a quick question? Yes. I caught all of the, um, the, the implications to the proposal. The original motion, John Brabant made a motion for the town of Callis, or should it be the select board to formally go on record, should yes. I say as opposing the balloon yes. project or dirigible thing? Probably dirigible is the right terminology, correct, David? It's the RTO uh, dirigible uh, proposal. Yeah. RTO. Okay. Are you all set, Katie? At yes. corner area. Yeah. And do you have anything else to update us on, David, while you're here? Well, we should hear this week on our grant application from the Northern Borderlands Regional Commission. I'm hoping I'm in my fingers are crossed. Um, we you're making progress, but it's still slow. I mean, we if we get the grant, we'll apply for a Vita loan to start the first um, phase one project in January. Um, we're high, we got some, we got a hundred thousand dollars from the H966 for operational costs um, related to COVID, which is really hard to, I mean, it's one of those interesting things. How do you justify COVID related work when we don't do COVID related work? But so we're supposed to help with telehealth and schools, school kids stuff. Um, and we're going to be hiring a temporary project manager to help us move along. Um, I'm starting to get burnt out. <laughs> yeah, I bet you are. They, I get called on to do a lot because I'm retired. Um, and it's getting to be almost too much. Um, some of the stuff is, I mean, we're, we're in negotiations with Washington Electric Co-op, which is all good, good. Um, but it is a lot of work. Um, yeah. they are finishing, they're finishing their feasibility study right now. And I'm hoping it shows that it's feasible because they can get money at 1% paid over 30 years. And that certainly makes it a lot more feasible to get it all done at one time. They're struggling with whether they want to provide the service or just run the fiber on their poles. And as far as CV fiber is concerned, we'll take it either way. Um, because we can't possibly do it anything cheaper than that, unless there's a federal grant, which at the moment, there's no federal money coming quickly. Um, so there's a lot of things happening. It's just not happening. You know, like I want it done yesterday. Um, especially when you, see, you think about spending a million dollars on a balloon. Right. When we could put fiber to everywhere in Calus for two and a half million dollars. I yeah, mean, it may crazy. take two years. You can't do it by December 31st. So it drives me crazy. Yeah. Anyway, that's, that's sort of my update. Okay. Well, now that you're crazy, is there any yeah. other questions for David while he's here? Cliff? David, do you know if Callus is in the uh, zone for the uh, Starlink beta testing? The what? We're in the phase one routes. Okay. We, whether we're the first route or not, it, and it depends. What and is it, that? It, basically, um, we'll be doing some community outreach to decide who the takers are. And it's really going to be who the, who, who's, who's signing up first. Um, but we have identified 120 miles of, of priority routes. Um, you know, right now we really need Velcro to run the fiber to the Maple Corner substation. Um, and that's probably not going to happen for one year anyway. Okay. Um, and so it, it's probably at least this phase, I would say it's a second run, not the first run because of that. Right now we know that we have fiber in Moortown that we can connect to Middlesex and Worcester and then go from Worcester to Callis is what we'd like to do. So what is, this, and, what is this you're talking about? I don't, I don't even know what you're talking the, about. Uh, the planning for where fiber goes in first. That was Cliff's question. Oh, okay. It was Callis first. Actually, so, I, was, I was asking also about uh, Elon Musk's Starlink program. Oh, the Starlink thing. That's an interesting, I mean, it's a potential, you know, game changer, but it's still not a fixed asset. I mean, you're, you're running around with a Wi-Fi connection to a satellite, right. which is probably going to be pretty reliable, but well, you have to buy the equipment up there. <laughs> yeah. And he's testing it out right now in, in Washington state, um, the pilot program. 
And, you know, it's another one of those options. Who knows? It ain't going to be cheap. No. There's nothing. So just and, for everyone's edification, understanding uh, amongst uh, uh, many of the other programs that Elon Musk is spending lots of money on to hopefully make lots of money with, he's flooding the... Um, the Clarkian belt of, that surrounds Earth, where all the satellites live, with a bunch of mini satellites, with the hopes of being able to provide broadband internet to everybody in the world. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's, he's launched. I don't know a couple thousand already. Yep. And who? Yeah. What? I keep listen, missing. What is it called? Eon? What? Elon Musk, the guy who owns Tesla, who started Tesla. Okay. Has another program in beta that's called Starlink. Okay, gotcha. Yep. And okay, is there anything else for David? Or are we ready to let him off the hook? I just want to say thank you. Appreciate thank your time, you. guys. I don't. I, you guys are great. I'm happy that you guys do it. Thank Thanks, you, David, David, for your work. We really appreciate hey, it. Have a have a good evening. Thank you. Right. You too. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks, thank David. You. Yep. See ya. Bye bye. Thank you all. All Thanks, right. Scott. Did Scott want to say something? No. Okay. Um, okay. So let's talk about training opportunities. Jim came up with a plan um, whereby instead of us paying for a session that's just our folks, that he said that there's plenty of other towns that have DRBs that could use the same type of training that we're talking about. Um, and it would only be $20 a person as opposed to however much it would cost for him to do training just for us. So I just wanted to run that by and see if we are all in agreement that that makes sense. We can still make it um, a required training. Would it be, did I see in there that it would be recorded? Yes. So that's awesome. Yep, yep. Okay, I just wanted to get your input. Thank you. So I'm going to tell him that yes, we will take him up on his offer and let us know when those trainings are. Okay. Sounds like it'll be just one, right? It'll be one that you can go to and or participate on Zoom and it'll be recorded if you miss it. Right. It's, it's a webinar. So I assume a webinar, you just go in and somehow we want to know that somebody's actually done it. So I don't know if webinars have a thing like where you sign in and because we want to make we want to make sure that there's actual attendance. You want to make sure that they check in throughout the thing or at least at the end of the thing to make sure they were there. Right. Frank. Yeah, Denise, I, I don't know how many of these um, Jim does. I do a lot um, remotely for for my legal education credits. And there's a practice that I've noticed in the past year or so of at various random points during the session, they will read out a code. Here's oh. the code. Okay, I'll ask him about that. Yep, so here and there. You, so, and, it's a web, so it's a intermittent webinar code or something? Yep, like, you know, uh, we'll take, we're taking a break um, and Oh, just before you go, here's your here's your one hour in uh, code. Jot okay. that down. You're going to need it as evidence that you did the webinar. And so, spending you know one of those every 45 minutes to an hour, and then we can audit at least that much to see that they did it. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. I had a question. Yes, Rose. Are we going to make it mandatory for each member of the DRB before they continue now starting to resume any further DRB hearings? Like, yeah, are we going to do it now? That's what we talked about. Yeah. Um, I don't know how soon now is as far as Jim being able to pull this together. So we'll have to find that out. Okay. But that was the, that was the intent. Good. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay, town hall. And did, uh, before we move on to that, can we just keep carrying an agenda item um, around once the training is done, how do we sustain a focus 
to ensure that we've actually instilled the culture change because I think we have a new DRB member that will be very helpful with that. <clears throat> yes. Yep. Still, I would want to, I would want to um, systematize that somehow so that we're not just assuming that it's, that it's happening. Yeah. Now I, we can leave this on as a continuing item that we want to follow up on. And yeah, I mean, I'm going to keep, I'm going to mention again, maybe Katie, Katie can capture for the minutes, the idea of actually having somebody audit, um, do the training and then audit against the training and give them feedback, just like we do in the town offices. Yeah. Okay. So Cliff, you're up. Uh, okay, town hall. And then uh, IT. Yep. Um, Grady's moving along at a nice pace, uh, getting the, the prep work and lead abatement done. He's taking a break tomorrow um, because of the primaries. It'll be taking place um, and it'll take half a day off Wednesday um, as they wrap up the set and then uh, commence full operation again starting Wednesday afternoon. Um, and I sent some pictures to everyone. I don't know if everybody got a chance to see those. Mm -hmm. If you didn't get them, I'll send them to you again. They were great. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really nice. And you can definitely see it. Um, very meticulous efforts being made. Uh, you drive by the building, take a look at it. It's definitely coming along nicely. He's really feathering it out. So we won't see a bunch of splotchiness once he puts the primer and main coat on. Um, any questions on any of that? The um, Friends of Town Hall have, um, they haven't met recently, um, so I probably won't be able to present the revised uh, proposed management agreement until our first meeting next month. Um, mainly just scheduling differences and plus Barbara having to step out and work on the primary election kind of threw our schedule mm -hmm. off. So it'll be a little delay before I get the, that finalized in front of everybody again. Um, any questions on that? Nope, sounds good. Okay. Uh, IT, uh, we have all of the equipment or I should say RB Tech has uh, delivered all the equipment for the slingshot uh, bridge backup system. Um, I've been in touch with Andy Felice. I'm going to meet with him later this week to talk about uh, getting things installed. The limiting factor at this point is we need to wait until Grady has painted the section of the building where this exterior antenna will be installed because we don't want to put it on where it's not been properly prepped and painted. Um, once that happens, then we'll use the lift to install the antenna and he'll run the lines inside, drop them through the wall where John showed him he could do it. And we'll get that hooked up as well as figure out how we're going to route the line from upstairs to the alarm system for our redundancy secondary connection to the alarm. Okay, and that will, and then that will eliminate that um, Seacoast security thing from yep. not testing properly, correct? Exactly. Yep. Okay, very good. Any questions on that? Nope. Okay, that's what I got. All right, thank you, Cliff. You're welcome. Um, okay, I sent, uh, I sent everybody this letter from the Vermont State Police Department of Public Safety. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it is they wanted me to, us to do as community members um, to this end state police commanders are connecting with municipal leaders and community organizations and some um, throughout Vermont to begin and in some cases to continue a discussion about how police services can sh can and should evolve to meet the demands of the 21st century well we basically never see the state police here um, you know, we don't have a contract with them. East Montpelier does, but it's really expensive because we checked it out one time. Um, so basically, we only have interaction mo mostly with the sheriff if there's a 
terrible incident, you know, then the state police respond. So I don't know really what we, I mean, it would be great if they could provide us more coverage just on a regular basis, but I don't believe that's what they're getting at. So how would you like to re us to respond to their request? I mean, I suppose we could ask them to be on the agenda or for them to hold maybe a, a Zoom meeting with some us and some of the other surrounding towns. Greg, um, someone's coming up the driveway. Wonder who it is, Rose. Sorry, it must be my son. I'm sorry, I thought it was muted. <laughs> it's my son. <laughs> I think I think it's it's really wonderful that they're reaching out and engaging and asking. Absolutely. Um, and I just I'm processing in my mind what kind of a conversation. I mean, there are people. I mean, our community, all communities, are eager to to contribute and to shape um, policing policy. Right now, it's very, what's the word? It's, um, I don't know, word's not there in my head, but um, but it's a huge, it's a huge topic. Yes, and, it is. And I, yeah, I like the idea of, a, of I think it would be, we'd, we'd, we'd be wrong to not respond and, and somehow invite them into the community because people do have so much to say. Yep. At the same time, I think it's bigger than the select board. And I like the idea of asking them to convene uh, a forum in, in, our, in our central Vermont community that people can participate in and just open it up that way. All right, I'm happy to draft a letter, short letter back to them and let them know how much we appreciate what they're doing. And here's our suggestion. All right. Do people agree with that? Yes. Yeah, I think that that's what they were talking about is, um, you know, just wanting to know how they could better serve us as far as policing, um, talking about systemic racism and how law, law enforcement can and should evolve to meet these modern cha challenges. So, I mean, I think just, you know, a courtesy, courtesy letter back to them you know, saying like what you just said, um, yeah. we appreciate all their efforts. Um, and like what Sharon said is maybe in the future have a time where people in Callis can meet face to face with them in some kind of public forum or something so that everybody could have a voice. Yeah, I think my idea was to have um, some kind of a public forum thing. Maybe they could do it by Zoom, depending on how soon yeah. they wanted to do it. It could involve, you know, several of the local towns, Woodbury, East Montpelier, all those. And because they say at the last of their letter, if necessary, we can schedule a meeting at a later date. So it seems like it would be a good idea to include the public. Mm -hmm. um, and they could post it on Front Porch Forum that this is when we're going to have this Zoom meeting to get your input. So I'll draft something up to that effect. Yeah, I think it's for the public, not for us. Right. You know, I, would, I would want them to come to the community in Zoom is fine with, right. um, with a message and ready to hear what's on people's minds. It's so relevant. I don't feel that this is really for the select board. It's it's a bigger issue. It's for us to facilitate their being here. But yeah, um, I think that they just want to know if, the way I took it. They want to know if we would be supportive and that kind of stuff so we can doctor yeah. up a letter to that effect. Yeah, I like the way uh, Sharon phrased it earlier, referencing the, our central Vermont community at large. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I said when I was trying to say every all the other towns around here. Yep. Okay. Um, we don't have any appointments or reappointments tonight. Um, but I did want us to remember that that UVM road study is hanging out there and we need to, I've sort of looked at it. They did come up with some changes to the plow routes. It's gonna be winter before we know it. Um, so we need to do something with that study. John Lenz, the, remember him, Professor Lenz? 
he offered to come to a board meeting and help us digest um, the report. Some of the report, I don't, I think that it's going to be met with, depending on where you stand, they talk about the narrowness of the roads and the trees. And um, so I don't think we want to necessarily focus on that, but we might want to really look at their recommendations for the plow routes. Because I don't know that we would agree with the fact that they think our roads are too narrow and we should cut some trees. And I don't imagine that we're going to agree with that piece of it. We like them narrow. Right. That's right. That's a Chittenden County point of view. Right. Yeah. And that's where they're from. I, I did review that report pretty quickly a while ago. And I did also note um, a, a point they brought up regarding the size of our trucks being oversized yes. for our roads. Um, and I saw that. I don't know if folks on the select board, probably Denise was around, Kathy Koshansky yeah. brought up a concern why are we buying these trucks that are increasingly large, larger? Um, and we were yep. assured that they're not really any wider, that they're not really any bigger. And yet again, we're hearing that in fact, they are larger and bigger, and then it makes it difficult for them to navigate down the roads. And it takes us in a direction that from the very beginning, the select board, you know, with all its different members over the years has said time and again, we do not want our roads being uh the size of our roads being dictated by the size of our trucks well and wasn't part of the argument john that they could have they could i'm not i'm not saying i agree with this but i think part of the road crew what we heard was that this way they can make less trips back to the sand pile because the trucks hold more product yeah. and we were assured that they were no wider right and that may be the case i i but the, uh, based on that report in the conclusion, what that conclusion in the report, I'm guessing they must be wider. They take up more space on the road, or maybe the plows that they carry are that much larger. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I was looking for in that report to see if they had recommended <laughs> any other locations where we might have a sand pile in the winter. And I don't recall seeing any kind of recommendation. Remember, we've thrown around that idea a little bit, asked if we could coordinate with East um, Worcester, and that was a no. I really like what John said about not letting the sides of the truck drive the sides of the road. So that's exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about, about not letting the big machines and, and road maintenance be first, but, but integrated. Yep. And FYI, I've been spending a lot of time in Peachum and I don't know if you guys have ever had an opportunity to be on a road in Peachum called more, I think it's Morrison Hill road. Um, it's like center road in East Montpelier where the, the trees are right up on the road and, and you feel like there, it's like you're in the wizard of Oz and they're going to reach out and hug you. But those roads are really tight. And, and I'm curious how other towns who have a, an ethos like we do and and think obviously they do i'm curious how how they work with their road crew and how their road crew hmm. gets it done because they have a big footprint too i mean that talk, yeah. talk about big land area and small people yeah good i mean that's interesting to know because maybe that's something we could look at to see we could poke around put on the to-do list katie that we should poke around on Peachum's website and see if they have any. Maybe they have some standards. You I know, wonder. I wonder if Jim knows anything about that. Being that now he's in Danville, but maybe yeah. Peachum is one of the towns that he does legal work for. So maybe he knows or has a little bit of insight. He's yeah. actually in Peachum. Yeah. He's, yeah. That's oh, he's in Peachum. Yeah. And his office is in Danville. Yeah. Oh, okay. So okay. Jim, yeah, I don't know that we want to pay Jim to poke around on their website. We can do that. Well, and no, I, but I was just saying, like, just have a conversation with them. But yeah. 
I don't know if you have to pay him for that. He may not have been here there long enough. I share office space with a former chair of a Peachum Select Board. So I will. Oh. Can you, so will you ask? Yeah, yeah. We, we've had some road conversations before. No doubt. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to get his or her input. Yeah, I'm going to send you guys a photo that I took over there recently because I was thinking about our roads when I was driving on this road. Okay, sounds good. Okay, this don't is, forget Thursday night is. Denise, this I'm is sorry, a go ahead. That I know Cabot and Marchfield have, and the citizens, I guess, have have had to deal with with select boards um, cutting these you know, 200 year old maples down to make it easier for the big old trucks to get through without any notice. This, of course, we remember it was too long ago that this happened in Woodbury where the road- John, we're having trouble hearing you. I'm, I'm speaking of that this- the Woodbury massacre? Yeah, there, there was the Woodbury massacre, both on, uh, golly, that I can't remember the name of the hill, the one coming up from Nelson Pond, but also right. by the uh, cemetery off Cabot Road. Yeah, you know, just destroyed, and it's a totally different look. And this happened in oh, uh, well, was like three years Lowry, ago. Right? Ruth Lowry's road over by the Unadilla Theater. It was a beautiful narrow road, like you see in East Montpelier by Bruce Chapel's farm. And one day they just came through and cut them. And by the time you hear the saws when you're busy, they're gone. Yeah, two hundred year old trees. So. Um, that created quite an uproar in Woodbury. And it's caused it in other towns. And it almost seems like in these other towns, they've done it knowing that there would be an uproar. So it's just get it done so you can't undo it. Um, it's very permanent. So it's, it's really important to stay on top of this as a board. Yeah. Uh, glad we are. Yeah, I think, I, think we're, I think we recognize the importance of how our roads are maintained, the tree and the canopy. I think people know that we're on top of this and we care. Okay, so don't forget about the um, joint meeting with East Montpelier on Thursday. Who, who all is going to attend? I will attempt to if I'm, I, I may be wrapping hay if I'm doing it late. I may or may not make it, but I will try if I'm free. Rose, Sharon, Cliff. Is it going to be in person or is it going to be on Zoom? Well, that's part what of my it? question. I would prefer that we, I would prefer to do it on Zoom. I agree that I like in person better, um, but we've kind of made a statement to, of not holding meetings in person for the reasons that we've all talked about. So what's, what do what are folks want to do? You're on mute, Sharon. Sorry. Uh, what time? Seven. Cliff, can we do Zoom with us and everybody else is in person? Yeah, it's a little problematic when you do that because um, they would need to either have a conference uh, set up uh, style um, computer system and uh, camera microphone or else they'd have to kind of pass that around to each of the people speaking so that we could see who's speaking and uh, hear what they're saying. If you, it's, it can be done, but it is difficult to do a hybrid Zoom uh, in-person meeting without the proper cool. equipment. So they're talking, were they, I can't remember now. I think they said they were talking about doing it in the bays, but maybe I misread that. Anybody yeah, remember? they had said that they could arrange it so that there would be distancing and they could even arrange for people's temperatures to be taken. They also offered to set it up as a Zoom meeting. Um, and yeah, even though we, I think we all agree that it is uh, preferable for in-person meetings and getting a read on things. Um, realistically, I think we need to stick with our policy. Uh, assessing the risk factor and um, yeah. I would propose a Zoom meeting. Well, I, I can let them know that we would do it by Zoom. 
That's fine. Okay. And then that way also Katie can take the minutes. If you're, are you available Thursday night, Katie, or at least listen to a recording? Okay. All right. Um, I think we, we before we leave that, it's um, we were going to have Jay Copping come back and meet with us. I again. couldn't. I can't hear you, Sharon. Rose, can you move? Thank you. Uh, we were going to have Jay Copping come back and meet with us again in August, so we can keep. Yeah, I'm going to see if he can come on the 24th. Okay, that's great. I won't be here on the 24th, FYI. It's our anniversary. Okay. All right, can we approve some minutes and then I'd like us to go into executive session if everybody can stand it. Only nine o'clock. Yep. All right, minutes. Um, we have June 15th, I think it was, that somehow we missed. And then we have the two meetings in July. I think I went through them all earlier. Yeah, I did. I only had a few comments. Yeah, somehow the numbering was off in this and I don't know if when Katie does whatever her magic is, if that gets fixed. It but will. I think that was my only comment. And Katie's shaking her head yes. Does that mean yes, Katie? Okay. So these were the minutes of June 15th that was was that I can't see the top so was that a that was a special meeting okay um so I would make a motion to approve the June 15th 2020 special meeting minutes second okay um let's take a vote Rose you got to unmute Rose Rose you got to unmute okay I'm trying hi hi yeah. okay and I'm an I Sharon Aye. Cliff? Aye. John? Aye. And Ruby's an I too. Okay. What do we have next? July third was it thirteenth? Yep. Yeah, thirteenth. Hang on, bringing it up. Okay. You guys all ready for a heat wave tomorrow? Supposed, yeah. to be, supposed to be brutal. Yeah, I'm supposed to go over to the town hall tomorrow morning and see if I can get the windows open for them. Yes. Do we have a fan? Uh, I was going to check with them because I do have a spare one I can loan them. I, yeah. I believe they do have one at the, the town office that they're going to take over, though. Yeah, I had, I had lent them a box fan last year or the year before, so I don't know if they still have it. I can't remember. These minutes were the ones we had looked at in our last meeting, but we decided to hold off on approving them uh, specifically, John, because we had the, this was the meeting where we discussed um, consideration of public meetings and events at town hall um actually that's not it it was the compliance with open meeting law discussion was yeah why did we so why i still don't remember now why we held off but i think it's time you to had uh, you had to step out of the meeting when we had the discussion but at the last meeting when we were reviewing these uh john wanted to take another look specifically at oh, this okay. section of the minutes before we decide to move forward with them yeah, I, yeah they, so are they you good okay. now john they're fine okay I went, I went through them today am i am i open um and i made minor just like just readability edits um i'm looking through there's nothing i changed that was substantive yeah i did this i did the same thing i didn't make any substantive changes oh wait i did add um to the list of people that i was going to reach out to uh, I added Stephanie to that list. Dan Singleton, by the way, is not our county forester anymore. No, do, you, do we know who our new forester is? They have, uh, they're not appointing one for a while. There's a hiring freeze. Ah, nice. Because I was thinking, because I was thinking about reaching out to the county forester for this tree health stuff, but I guess we can't do that. 
I did. He, but, I, he was on my list for, well, for the, as they pertain to a roads committee. I wonder if he would, just as a callous resident, help with that. Actually, a really good point. If anybody has a personal email for him, I would be happy to try again to talk to him. Yeah, I think I have a personal email. I'll see if I can find it. Oh, it's Brooke Dingledine. I, I just saw that again. It, yeah. It, it's pronounced Dingledine, but it's spelled Dingledine. Yeah. So, hey, folks, yeah. I, I got to check out my, it's my son's birthday party um, that I've kind of been blowing off here. So oh. um, you can I, you can vote me in support of these minutes, but I got to check out for the rest of the meeting. Okay, because we were gonna. Well, I, you have to report back to me on executive yeah. session. I'm okay. Going I on. can do that. Sorry. Thank you. All right. Happy birthday, John's son. It's Christopher. Yeah. Happy birthday, Christopher. Happy birthday, Christopher. My uh, baby's 24. Oh my gosh, are you old or what? You're as old as dirt, John. I had him when I was three. Yeah. Okay. John, I, that means I've known you for half his life. I remember when he was in elementary school. Like yep. he, was, he was in elementary school in sixth grade and Jack was in like first grade. Yeah. Yep. We've all been around a long time. We're a bunch of old geezers. We are. All right. And make a motion that we approve these minutes uh, with edits. I'll second that. John already voted in favor. Cliff. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, John. Cliff? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Rose? Aye. All right. July 27th, I think it was. Yes. Stand by, please. I did, I just glanced through, through these, um, but I wasn't at this meeting, so. Yes, that's right, you weren't. I did review them line by line. I think I just made a couple of corrections that were like typos. Um, and now I can't remember, why did I, I oh, right here. The, that sent, there was a sentence that didn't make any sense. The roadside, the mower and all, atta oh, the mower and all attachments. Um, the road commissioner said all the main, um, 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 it had to do with the cleaning that we yeah, wanted to make sure right that it here. was, yeah. Pressure wash the mower and all attachments before leaving right. the garage. So that was just so, one thing I wanted to add. Yeah. Was, was it said at that meeting? Do you guys remember that pressure washing the, yes, absolutely. No, yeah. no, no, no. Denise said it was a best, best practice. That I was think, not yeah, said I think John mentioned it then. He, he recommended it, but he didn't say that it was necessarily a best practice. He, okay, he that's that's fine. It. We we got that. We we'll, we will get that clearly on the record for tonight. Right. Exactly. And oh, I didn't. This didn't make any sense. This sentence, I couldn't figure out what we were trying to say. You know, John made a point. Um, last meeting in this sentence about how Act 46 is attempting to close down, con to consolidate schools and, and close small schools. Right. And he was connecting that, I think, to the, the increase in out-of-staters buying here and seeking small yeah, schools. And, yeah, I know what he means. But okay. It doesn't, how like, it doesn't, it doesn't read um, because Act 46, now that there's COVID, Small schools make a ton of sense because they're easier to monitor and know people. Um, what they, yeah, it's like he's, and John, John and I have talked about this at length. It's in cross purpose now from with COVID and the closure of small schools. Um, yes, because the, the people moving to Vermont, I think, a lot of people from what we've learned is they are moving to these small towns because of the small schools so that there isn't an overpopulation of kids in the schools. So however we can get that in there. 
Are we actually seeing that in, I mean, I know that the, I can, t I can personally attest that the real estate market is crazy, but are we seeing people moving to town with small kids or is our elementary school going to have a little boom again? Um, we just had a new family move in on Bain Camoli Road. They have one kid at U32, going to be going to 130, U32 and one going to Callis Elementary. From where though? Um, I don't remember from where, but he was originally from Callis. <coughs> and I know that there's been, I think it's six new homes that have been built. Probably some of those are the perennial fields homes. There's no little kids in that one. Nope. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's, I don't know how to answer your question, but yeah, we will find out. Yep. Enough. Okay. I don't think I had anything else. I'm not sure. I'll scroll through to see. Nope, I nope. didn't see anything else when I looked at it. Okay, I would make a motion to approve these minutes with the edits. Is there a second? Second. Okay, um, Rose? Aye. Cliff? Aye. Sharon? Uh, I'm, I'm uh, abstaining as to the regular meeting and voting aye as to the report out from executive session. All right. And I'm an aye. So do you folks want to go into executive session? Yeah, we got to. So moved. Yes. So I'll second that. All right. And All this right. is for personnel matters as per the um, statute notation on the agenda. At 9.20 p.m. Okay. The recording has stopped. Good night, right. everybody. Thank you, Rose, Casey. I'll be in touch. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Good night. Katie. Good night.